All right, y'all. It's going to be a short introduction today, but we're going all the way back to episode one of the Fit CEO podcast. So if you have just started your online fitness coaching business, or if you have had an online fitness coaching business for a while, and uh, right now you feel like you're going through it, you feel like you're struggling, you feel like you're stressed out, you feel like you're just not sure what your next move is. Uh, episode one is my origin story. And uh, I experienced many, many, many triumphs and tribulations uh, on the come up to growing my online fitness coaching business and, and growing NLCA. And uh, I still experience a lot of trials and challenges and stresses every single day. And I'd be lying to you if I said that I didn't. And those are future stories for future podcasts. But like I said, if you feel like you're going through it right now, if you feel like you need a little bit, a bit of inspiration, you feel like you, you need a little bit of motivation, this will be a really great podcast for you. So we're going back to episode one. You guys are going to listen to my origin story and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Ayo, what is up, everybody? Chad here. Hope you guys are having an amazing day wherever you're at in the world. As you guys know, co-founder of the Next Level Coaching Academy and now founder of the Fit CEO Podcast. This is episode number one. Welcome in. I hope you guys are ready. It's been a long time coming uh, since I created a podcast. I'll probably make a whole podcast on why I postponed making a podcast for so long, but we'll save that story for another day. So purpose of this podcast, if this is your first time listening, of course, it's your first time listening because it's the first episode. Uh, but purpose of this con podcast is business talk, business talk, mindset talk, life lifestyle talk, but most importantly, business talk. <laughs> so we're going to start off with episode one, and I'm going to give you guys my story of how I became a full-time online fitness coach, how that evolved into becoming co-founders with Dela on the Next Level Coaching Academy. This is a story of tenacity. This is a story of resilience. This is a story that if you're in the thick of it right now, may be the story that you need in order to get to that next level, in order to take that next step in your business. So strap up, let's get into it. All right. So I'm going to preface this story by saying this. It took me about five years to graduate college. Uh, I went to four different colleges within five years. And yeah, corporate life wasn't for me. Nine to five life wasn't for me. College life wasn't really for me. All right. So freshman year, I went to a small school called Western New England. Uh, I went there and I was recruited there to play lacrosse. Uh, and I was, a, I was also studying sports management, uh, which was a specialization in the business department at this school. All right. So at the end of the year, I decided, you know what, this isn't really for me. So I actually traveled back to Connecticut, which, are, which is where I'm from. And I went to UConn stores, the big, the big college, the only really big college in Connecticut, uh, UConn stores. And it's a party school. I got into the party scene a little bit. I got a 1.6 GPA. In addition to that, I studied exercise science there with a concentration in strength and conditioning. And literally the, the semester that I went there, the fall semester, I got a notice in the mail saying that um, that major is no longer offered at UConn stores. So kind of ironic. I transferred to UConn for this specific major. And then within that semester, they also told me that that is no longer a special specialization that they have. <laughs> so for spring semester, I went back up to Massachusetts to another college called Springfield College, which was literally 15 minutes away from the first college that I went to freshman year. I started playing lacrosse again. Like I said, I went there for exercise science. Uh, at the end of the spring semester, I was just like, you know what, I'm burnt out on lacrosse. At this point, I played for like 15 years and I just didn't want to play anymore. And quite honestly, I didn't really want to bounce around from school to school anymore because as I talked about earlier, school wasn't really for me. It wasn't really something that I was passionate about. It wasn't even really something that I wanted to complete, but I completed it for my parents. Um, so I had to make a decision on where I was going to go to school in the fall. And I decided that I was going to go to a small school, which was about 15 minutes away from, from my home in Connecticut, uh, which where is where I commuted to called Western Connecticut State University. And as I mentioned before, I commuted to this school. And funny enough, this is how I rekindled with Caitlin. And as you guys know, Caitlin is my is my girlfriend. If you guys don't follow her on Instagram, it's uh, Caitlin Michelle Fit. So me and Caitlin dated throughout high school. We met when I was 16. Um, there was a period of time when I went off to school that you know we didn't talk. Um, she had another boyfriend. I was single at the time. We were both living our own lives, but. I went, like I said, in that fall semester of my, I believe, junior year, uh, we rekindled and we started hanging out again. And I'm a firm believer that 
there is fate in life and you are meant and certain people are meant to be in your life at certain times. And there is a reason that me and Caitlin uh, rekindled and I'm a firm, firm believer in that. So um, now we're getting into the story of how I got into online fitness coaching. So we started hanging out again. Um, like I said, we were both in the same major at Western Connecticut State University. We we're both studying exercise science. And um, we started hanging out and she come she comes over one night and we go down to my room and you know, we're hanging out, we're watching TV. And she said, I want to show you somebody. And I was like, okay, cool. So she pulls up YouTube and she pulls up Christian Guzman, which Everybody listening to this podcast knows who Christian Guzman is. At the time, I had no idea who Christian Guzman was, um, but Caitlin obviously knew that I, you know, loved health and fitness, and I was even a part-time per- in-person trainer at this point as well. And um, we started watching Christian Guzman, and quite honestly, I was like, "Who is this guy? This guy is a complete douchebag. He's making all his money. He's doing all this online fitness coaching stuff. What even is online fitness coaching?" And I was pretty apprehensive about it. Quite honestly, I thought it was all a joke, and I was like, "There's no way that anybody could live this lifestyle and be an online fitness coach." So, after me and Caitlin were done hanging out, walked her out to her car, came back downstairs into my room, and Christian Guzman was still on the TV. And I can remember sitting at the edge of my bed and it, I stayed up until like two, three o'clock in the morning, uh, just going down the rabbit hole of Christian Guzman videos. And by the end of that, I literally told myself that this is going to be my lifestyle. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to commit my life to this. And I gave myself three months. (laughs) I told myself in three months, I was going to be a full-time online fitness coach. Those three months really took about three years and the story really starts here, to be quite honest. So the first two, two and a half years, like I said, was an absolute struggle. And I, what I thought I needed to do, and this is probably because I watched so much Christian Guzman, is I thought I needed this massive YouTube. I thought I needed this massive Instagram. I thought I needed all of these followers in order to actually have a successful online fitness coaching business. So I started YouTube. I actually started vlogging. I believe at first it was like three times a week, but then I switched and I decided that I was going to vlog every day because, you know, like I said, this is what I thought I had to do. So I also built an Instagram, started posting on there. And quite honestly, for like the first two years, I was on every single social media platform. I was on Twitter. I was on Instagram. I was on YouTube. I was on Snapchat. I was on Musical.ly was one random one that I was on. Uh, I was doing email marketing, everything, Facebook, everything you can think of, I was on, right? And here was my thought process. Like I said, I started with Instagram. I started with YouTube. I started posting and nothing was happening. I didn't notice I was getting any clients. So I was like, all right, I must, I must just need another platform. I must just need more followers. So that's why I created all these platforms because I was operating under the notion that I just needed a massive following, that I just needed a bunch of followers in order to have any success. And like I said, I I, I ran this for about two years. Um, You know, I did a bunch of other mini projects. I thought I needed a website. I can remember for a long period of time, I worked on Wix, like a free Wix website to try to build a website because I thought that was going to be the thing. I even started a podcast, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, I did everything under the sun on, on what I on what I thought was the right thing to do to grow an online fitness coaching business. But what it led to was a ton of frustration, uh, a ton of anxiety, a ton of stress because I never got any results. I did everything that I thought I was supposed to do and I was working really hard and I didn't lack any work ethic, but I wasn't using the right strategy and I wasn't using the right tools. And, you know, it's part of the reason why it's actually probably the main reason why I started the next level coaching Academy, right? But we're not going to get into that yet. We're going to complete the story. So that was about two years of my life, just doing all that completely stretched out or stressed out. And I can remember one particular moment. Uh, at the time I had a $800 Jeep Cherokee. Uh, I nicknamed her Betsy. Uh, the thing barely started. I, I can remember you know, when I would turn the uh, turn the knob, and I have videos of this, I posted this on my Instagram, when I would turn the knob, it would take about 10 seconds, it would be like ring, 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 and then it would finally turn over. So more times than not, I would expect the car to not start. Um, to my surprise, it started most of the time, but I digress. Anyways, uh, I can remember when I was sitting in my $800 Jeep Cherokee, 
and um, I just started bawling and I just started crying. And I can remember I was holding the steering wheel um, and I was extremely frustrated. Um, I felt so defeated. I felt so hopeless. I can remember punching the ceiling and uh, I called Caitlin and I called Caitlin and I said, Hey, I, I think I'm going to give up on this. And she knew this was my dream. She knew that this is what I wanted to do. And I was pretty much, you know, ready to quit. And I was like a year and a half in, maybe two years. And I don't know the exact timeline, but um, I'll never forget this. Caitlin told me not to quit. She said, don't quit. This is what you want to do. Continue to push on. And um, as I mentioned, there's been many, many of times that I've been extremely grateful for Caitlin and, and for her being in my life. And this is definitely one of them. Um, because if I won, if I never went back to Western Connecticut State University and met her, she would have never introduced me to Christian Guzman and sparked this dream for me. And then a year and a half, two years into me trying to make this dream a reality when I wanted to quit, she told me to continue to push on. So um, like I said, I, I think it's fate that certain people come into your life. And there's many of times that I've thought that about Caitlin, and I'm sure there's many more times to come um, that I will think that about her as well. All right. So she told me not to quit. And uh, at this point, I knew that I probably needed some help and I probably wasn't going to figure it out on my own. Um, you know, part of this year and a half, the first two years, year and a half uh, that I struggled, it was, you know, more, looking at it in hindsight 2020, it was more so my fault. I, um, I was extremely stubborn. I thought I could do it on my own. And, you know, I'm going to take ownership for that because I should have gotten help sooner. All right. Um, yeah. So first business coach. That's where we're at. So at this point, I decided that I probably needed some help. I probably needed to hire um, a business coach. Now, keep in mind, I was extremely broke. There was many of times that I would have to use quarters to get gas. Um, there was many of times where my card was negative. There was many of times where I had to go into my dad's shed to take a gas can and pour the gas that was meant for his lawnmower into my car because I couldn't afford gas uh, couldn't really afford much of anything. Um, there was some points where I had like these random business ideas and, uh, you know, I would go on a, uh, app called Fiverr and Fiverr is where you can get ch really cheap work. Um, so I had this one idea called the team CMF transformation squad, and, uh, it was going to cost me like 30 bucks to create this promotional video that I was going to run as an ad. Um, and I barely had any money at this point. So what I did is I collected as many water bottles as I can and deposited them in a dispenser to get some change back. You guys have probably seen the videos and that business idea didn't work, but I would, I, I was just really poor and uh, I just didn't have any money and um, I just didn't have any means. All right. So getting into the first business coach now. So I found my person, I'm not going to share any names here. And I got on the phone with this, with this individual. And um, he told me it was $6,000 for three months of coaching and $6,000 at that point in my life was more like $600 million. And I shit you not like that number looked like $600 million to me, <laughs> but here's what I told him. And, you know, I, I can only wonder what he thought of me after I said this. I said, give me two weeks. I'm going to come up with the money. I'm going to put a down payment and we're going to make this happen. Now that I've taken so many sales calls, if I was him, I probably would have called bullshit, but I was for real. I was for real. So what I did is I went back home. I collected all of my assets and by assets, I mean clothing, bikes, headsets, anything that I owned that had some value. And I put it on Facebook Marketplace and sold as much of it as I could. Um, this was right around Christmas time. And I can remember specifically on Christmas Eve, I went to this guy's house and I blew all the leaves off of his yard for you know a couple extra bucks um, for me to put towards this business coach. But I did everything under the sun to come up with the money. And what I came up with was $2,000 out of the 6,000, okay? So what I told myself is, all right, I have a $4,000 balance, but I'm going to get clients because this guy posted all about his results. And um, here's what happened. So I had a $4,000 balance. I told myself I was going to get a bunch of clients, be able to pay it off. Over the course of that three-month period, over the course of that 90-day period, I only sold one individual client, I only sold one individual client for $2,000. So I was at the end of the program, I was $2,000 in debt and um, I didn't get any results at all. 
And, you know, part of it was my fault. Uh, I still was really stubborn in the program and I wasn't really open to hearing any feedback. Um, but the other aspect was the program really wasn't the right program. I don't even think the guy's in business anymore. Um, yeah, it just wasn't the right, right fit, if I'm being honest. So I came to the end of the program. Like I said, I was $2,000 in debt. At this point, I had debt collectors coming after me. Like there was many moments where I can remember I was laying on the floor and talking to somebody who was trying to recover debt from me, um, the $2,000 that I owed. But, you know, he had a collections agency come after me and I was having conversations with the collections, collections agency to make sure that I could pay back the money. <laughs> so um, I laugh now, but I wasn't laughing then. I was, I was really miserable. And um, at this point, I was able to get a job as a waiter at a little uh, barbecue joint um, near my hometown called The Wire Mill. And uh, I was able to pay off my debts and I was able to start have, a, I was starting to have a little bit of money, right? So I'm working this part-time job. I think at this point I was a senior in college and I think I was part-time because I had enough credits. Like I said, it took me five years. So my last couple semesters were part-time. They weren't really full-time. So um, after that business program, believe it or not, I still wanted to do online fitness coaching and I still wanted this to be my dream. So uh, I spent the next six months after that trying to figure it out on my own, went back to the good old strategies that I thought would work, building a following, posting, hoping people would come for me um, or come ask me for coaching. And once again, it didn't work. So this might sound crazy, but after those six months, I came to the same conclusion that I probably need some help. So I found another business coach online, or he actually found me. Um, it's funny, he uses a lot, he used a lot of the strategies that I use now to prospect people. He was DM outreaching me. I didn't know it at the time. I thought we were just having a good conversation, but he was DM outreaching me, commenting on all my posts, and he was really getting my attention. He was doing a really good job. And I would watch all of his Instagram lives and things of that nature. And I told myself, this is going to be my business coach and I'm going to do this again. And I was really reluctant. Uh, I can remember, you know, I even asked my parents, I asked Caitlin, um, you know, is there, is this the right decision? Um, everyone was a little skeptical. I don't know why, but this time I wasn't skeptical. This time I told myself, like, I actually think this is going to be it. Um, so I got on the phone with his sales team same price, $6,000 for three months. Um, I had some spending money at that time because of my part-time waitering job. Um, but by all means, I was not blowing anything out of the water. I think, you know, my paychecks were like 300 bucks a week, something like that. Um, and, you know, I had to fund my lifestyle too. So more or less, I still was basically broke. <laughs> Maybe I had a couple extra bucks, but I was pretty much broke. Um, but I was able to set up a, um, payment plan for $2,000 a month for three months. And um, here's how that went. So the first, I think two months of the program, I, I didn't get any results. And uh, I was infuriated. I thought business coaches were a scam. I thought that, you know, maybe it's all me. Maybe I just suck at this. You know, I thought every negative thought under the sun, but I paused myself, reminded myself why I was doing this. And I said, I'm going to make this work and I'm going to, I'm going to find any way I can to make this work. So I had one month left in the program and I shit you not, I was about to graduate in that month as well. It was August of 2018, August of 2018. Within that month, I absolutely smashed it. And then within the next month, because I re-signed for the program, I re-signed again uh, for the program. Within the next month, I had my first $10,000 month and that was September um, 2018. In that month of September, I filed for my LLC papers and I was a full-time online fitness coach. Um, and at this point, once I got that ounce of belief, once I got that first result, I knew I could do it. And um, I actually failed to mention this story. Uh, I'll tell it really quick. So we're backtracking now. The first client I got I was sitting in that Jeep Cherokee that I was telling you guys before, and the Jeep Cherokee was worth 800 bucks. And uh, I can remember I was on the sales call. His name, I'm going to share his name because I don't think you'll care. His name is Joseph Aldama. He was my first client ever. He's still actually in our fitness community, believe it or not. And it's been multiple, multiple years at this point. Um, so it's really cool to see that the first client I ever signed online is still actually in our program. But once again, I digress. Um, so 
eight hundred dollars is the worth is the worth of the car that I was sitting in, and I closed him for one thousand six hundred dollars for three months of online fitness coaching. So I literally made more double of what my car was worth while I was sitting in my car, and you can only imagine how I felt, um, crying, punching the ceiling, so excited, so amped up. And like I said, that's all I needed to hit the ground running. That's all I needed was that little bit of success, that little bit of hope to create the momentum to actually build my online fitness coaching business. So August, I had a great month. September was my first $10,000 month. And at that point, I just hit the ground running. I was able to actually, within this uh, business coaching program that I was in, I was able to actually enter their highest level program. And I was one of their, if not their top student um, in the program as well. So it was really, really cool. Um, I'm going to fast track a little bit now into how we got into the next level coaching Academy. So over the past couple of years, once I figured out what to do, like I said, I never lacked hard work. I just lacked the right strategy. Um, I was able to scale the business to multiple six figures. I was able to get out of the doing into the management. And now I'm not even in the management anymore. I'm actually the CEO. Like I could choose if I want to work or not, because we have people who operate the business. Um, so it's very hands-off for me now, but I always had a love for business. Um, if not, probably had more of a love for business than I did for fitness. Um, and I knew that I always wanted to be a business coach and I knew that I always wanted to help people uh, grow their businesses, but I knew that it wouldn't be right for me to help somebody grow their business without me actually growing my online fitness coaching business first. So that's why it took me so long to actually become a business coach because uh, it just didn't feel congruent. So like I said, I was able to scale everything out, outsource everything, um, hire a bunch of positions, get into that full-time CEO role and that is when me and Dela had the conversation to create the Next Level Coaching Academy. And there was a short stint where I did a bunch of one-to-one -one coaching. Um, but after that conversation with Dela, she was also doing some one-to-one -one business coaching as well on the side. We both came to the conclusion that we wanted to bring this to scale and we wanted to bring our thoughts on business to the masses. Uh, and between Dela and I, we have 10 years of online fitness coaching experience. Um, I started when I was 19. So uh, I'm 25 now. I almost forgot. So that's six years. And Dela uh, has been doing it for four years. So in combination, we've been doing this thing for 10 years. Um, like I said, after the conversation that me and her had, we just came to the conclusion that this was, this was it. We're going to hit the ball. We're going to hit the ground running. And we're going to teach everybody the things that we wish we knew when we first started, because like I said, if, if we have many students who actually go full time within their first like couple of weeks, uh, within their first month, uh, but it took me two and a half years because I was just trying to figure it out on my own. If I had the information that I had now back then, I probably would be one of those people that was full time within the first 30 days, just because I didn't lack the work ethic. But Guys, coming to the end of the story here, um, that is why that is why I decided to, you know, uh, co-found the Next Level Coaching Academy with Dela is because I went through so much struggle and I went through so much triumph and I went through so much, so many challenges um, that I don't want other people to go through that. I don't want other people to have the same story as me because it wasn't a fun story. It, it really wasn't. And looking back on it now, I'm extremely grateful that I've gone through it because I know that that story alone is going to help so many people um, transcend in their own businesses. But that's why I decided that I wanted to co-found this with Dela is because I wanted to help other people get through that so that they don't have to experience that and you guys can just bypass all the mistakes that I made and start growing your business and getting your business to the point that you actually want to individually get it. So guys, that's a little bit about me. That's a little bit about why we started the Next Level Coaching Academy and also why I uh, decided to start this podcast as well. But this is the beginning of a very long journey with the Fit CEO podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe, do all the podcast things. I'm not you know, 100% of the terminology yet, but you know, I think people say leave a rating, leave a review, subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace out.